Amen. Amen. All right. Um, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, welcome back once again to, to this seminar. And as we continue with the theme and these thoughts that, that were brought out earlier by um, yesterday by Swindon and today by Romario and going over the, um, the, the presidential election. Now, um, as, as earlier what the Lord has been helping to see, you know, there's always been an election and there's always been a certification time and there's always been an inauguration, but never before um, um, since this movement came in 89 has God really connected um, these, these ceremonial things in America to the message like he is now. And what I'm understanding, he wants us to understand something, not about how America conducts this ceremony, but how about how Christ is conducting that ceremony. Because the Lord uses the natural to do what? To, to teach us the spiritual. Amen? So he raised up America as the glorious land to illustrate the glorious land in heaven. That at the end of the 1260, which is this, the, um, I didn't write them up here, but this line is 538 to 1798. And at the end of this 1260, the end of this 1260, God brought his people into the glorious land because at the end of the Sunday law crisis where's God going to bring us into the glorious land in heaven that's what he's going to do so the Lord uses that natural thing to teach us about what he's going to do for us as we go forward now I just wanted to represent these things up here bear with me for a little while as I try and write some of these down make sure that I got it right Now, there's much to go over in some of these things. 17. Oh, I forgot. Give me one second, I'll be with you. Just want to make sure I get these down. All right, I just want to make sure I get these things in so that we can follow along. Now, I'm going to read some quote. The reason why I could take that little bit of time, because Swinton and Romario read most of these things that I'm going to read, so I'm not going to read all of it because we're familiar with it, such as Daniel 11, 1 and 2, and Daniel chapter 8. Swinton went over that with the ram with the two horns, and Romario picked up and following the same thought. Amen? So I'm not going to read much of this because we're already familiar. I'm just going to go into parts to make some connections um, to these things. Now, we're all familiar with this, his, these histories, which is very important for this history. Because Ezekiel says that this is the time of the end, from here to here. Amen? We've been following for some time from the fifth day of the fourth month down to the end. It's the time of the end. And we're told that in the end, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, now all these things happen for ensamples upon whom the ends of the world are come. 
So we're to take all these things that Christ has recorded for us and to see how they're being fulfilled from the beginning down to the end. Because this is the time of the seventh plague, is the mystery of God being finished. And God is fulfilling all of, this, all of the testimonies of the scriptures is taking place in it. Now, obviously, this is a grand work. It's not a light work. I mean, you're taking the whole Bible and you're trying to plug the Bible into this. So this calls for us to exercise the mind such as we've never done before. And, and, and we have to tax the mind to, to understand these things. But we are assured that um, if, if any man will have to do of his will, what shall he know? We know the text, John chapter 7. He shall know of the doctrine. Amen. Whom shall he teach what? Doctrine. But we have to be willing to know the truth to, for, for the Lord to teach us the doctrine of the end. So going down, uh, let's look into our first quote. And it says, this is from Prophetic, um, prophetic Exposition. I think it's by Josiah Litch. Um, it says, the time of the end is not the end itself, but a period to precede it and terminate in the end itself. Very easy, right? This is what we've been teaching, that the time of the end is not a point. It's this period. And this is easy to show in Genesis chapter 6, where God came to Noah at the time of the end and said, Noah, the end of all flesh is what? Come up before me. So right here, our message comes, the end of all flesh is come up before me. Here's the end of all flesh. But before it, the, God gives a message. So this light comes here to us, the end of all flesh has come, and we got to do this work during this time in, in faithfully discharging the work that the Lord has given us. And then he says, <clears throat> jump down to the next bowl. He says, which must take place in, um, go down. Let me go up a little. This is clear from the circumstances of the events which are to take place during that period. Events which must take place in time because they relate to the history of earthly governments and require time for their accomplishment. So the time of the end is, is God given time for a government to acquire its accomplishment. All right. I want to say, I know we're talking about Biden, but we need to understand that Biden is a representation of the last earthly government. And God has given this last government time to establish, establish itself. Y'all following? Because there's one more government to be set up. Which one? It's the seventh what? Remember, remember uh, I'm, I'm bringing a lot into this, right? This is the effect of every vision. So in order for I, what I'm about to say, I know many of us is going to understand this when I bring in Revelation chapter 17. Amen. Revelation 17 says there's five and five are fallen. Right. And we're in the one is time. Correct. And the one has got to go down. Correct. And what more? And one and the seventh comes up. And in that time, a eighth, the eighth comes back again. Amen. So you're going to have six, seven and eight. They're all going to be reigning together. So America has to go down. And, and Christ is going to, because Christ works in a system of seven, which is completion. He's going to bring this earth to completion in the 7,000 year. So if there's a 7,000 year, there must be a seventh kingdom. And in that last kingdom, which, and then the eighth comes, Christ is going to come. Y'all follow? Amen. So there's one more kingdom after the United States. But the United States is still going to be the chief kingdom of, 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 of that system. And I hope that we're following what it's showing us. On a bigger picture, when the two horn system goes down, it turns into a globalist system. Y'all follow? That's what Biden is, is teaching us. It's going to turn into a, America's about to turn into a globalist kind of system. Still be in the head, but it's a globalist system now. It's one that works in a global atmosphere. Amen. So all of this is shown. I, I pray to God that we're following because it's very important that we get understand these things. So it says, go down to the next quote. It says, by unusual workings, if it's unusual, what does that mean? Simple, right? It's not usual. Was January 6th usual? No. It's unusual. So put this in, in light of that. By unusual workings through nature, God will express to doubt in human agencies that which he clearly reveals where? In his word. So from here to here, we should see unusual things happen. Y'all follow? We should see things unusually that's not common to society happening, both in the church and in the world. <coughs> Amen. Hold to the court. Amen. That's nice. So unusual things are going to take place, and they're going to continue to take place until we get to the end. It's not finished. We're about to see Biden do some unusual things. He has to in order to fulfill these things. And what does she say? So that we might be convinced that there's a God in heaven. 
that God's hand is beneath these unusual things. He's orchestrating these things. That's what Christ wants us to see. Go down. Next quote. It says, not a single event, not a what? Single event, January 6th. Keep that in mind. Not a single event of human life is unknown to our maker. January 6th is known to our maker. The Lord brought that about for his people. That's why he brought it about. Let's go down now. Remember, I'm not going to read these things. We're familiar. Daniel, Gabriel comes to Daniel at the time of the end, and he says, now I'm going to show you the truth, right? That's what he did. And he says, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. Remember that, in Persia. They shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. But he says, in Persia, the fourth is going to be what? Far richer. So in this two-horned system, in the, in the last days, we should see a power comes up that's far richer than the three that stood up prior to it. And he's going to be most famous for his riches. Have we seen that? Have we seen somebody most famous for his riches? That's really all he's famous for? Amen. I don't need to, I don't need to give any names. And, he, and the Bible says he was a king. He was president. So we should see a president come up in the end of the world that's far richer than the presidents that were before him, beginning at the time of the end. And when we see this unusual thing, this is a sign that the end of all things is at hand. Amen? All right, so going down. It says, so jump down now to DAR. We're familiar. And I wanted to bring this. In this fourth, notice this, right? Coming down to the fourth, and you notice a feet, there's a division. So it's always in the fourth that the, the kingdom gets divided. Y'all follow? So when this fourth king come up, it's in his time that America gets divided. And since he's been up, what condition has America been in? More than any other time in his history. Divided. Polarizing. Two, two people have to make a decision which side that they, um, you're going to end up on, which is only an acting out of the Civil War all over again. So going down, D.A.R., she said, um, this is from Uriah Smith. It says, the fourth king from Cyrus was Xerxes, more famous for his riches than his generalship. Was, was the fourth king a general that ruled as a president? No. I'm, no. No, he's no he was, he, yeah, he's far from that. But he's only famous for his riches. Yeah. He, makes, he makes business decisions. And when you go to Ar Ahasuerus, he was a businessman himself. He makes biz. That's why he, he, how do you think he acquired his money? He's good with business. Y'all yeah, follow? Just go read the history of these, of these kings. Um, remember, the spirit behind the king of the past is the same spirit behind the kings of the future. It's either they have the spirit of God actuating them or they have the spirit of Satan actuating them. There's only two spirits from the beginning of the world to the end of the world. And in every generation, men, men line themselves up behind one of these spirits. And what God did, he recorded in his Bible the histories of people that had these two spirits. So that way his people at the end of the world can recognize the workings of these two spirits. And it's easy for them to cast their lots on the right side or end up on the wrong side. Amen. That's why the Bible is given. It's given so that we can recognize the workings of Christ in the earth versus Satan in the earth at the same time. So going down, Xerxes was the last Persian king who invaded Grecia. What was he? So President Trump is the last Persian king. He's the last king to represent America for what it stood for as republicanism and Protestantism. He's the last president to defend the Constitution of the United States. And he makes a bold stance against the powers that's trying to remove it. Y'all follow? That's what he, He's the last one. And that's why the whole world launched out against him. I hope y'all are following these thoughts. Amen. After this now, because what did the Bible say? The, the last horn, what did it do? It rose higher. So Romario ended here by saying the church is going to come up because that's the horn that's now going to rise higher. And Christ is showing us how this is coming to be. So the civil aspect of our nation is going into the pit. And who's coming out of the pit? The church aspect. And now the church begins to gain the ascendancy from this point forward right on time for God's people to gain the ascendancy from this point forward. Amen? Amen. I hope that we're following these thoughts. So, but here's what I want us to get. From 538 to 1798, King of the North, and from 1793, this is what this is, you see the aspect of the King of the South. But the 1260 teaches us so many things.
if you just if you just take your mind and meditate upon these things we're supposed to meditate as we meditate upon these things true meditation according to the bible because i know satan has perverted that word meditation so we're supposed to meditate upon the truth feast on it think upon it play it over in your head as you're walking as you're talking as you're sleeping as whatever you do you constantly think upon the bible this is what the bible tells us to do correct so when you think of this it teaches you many things and what is it teaching us during this time the two witnesses were persecuted so the Bible is showing us how the king of the north persecutes the two witnesses and how the king of the south perse persecutes the two witnesses. And what you have, the king of the north, the Republicans, they're also persecuting the two witnesses. How are they doing it? They're claiming to represent the truth, but secretly they're speaking lies. This power cares nothing about telling you the truth. They're going to tell you what they believe according to their ways, and they openly make war against the two witnesses. You follow? But in, but in actuality, they're both, making, they're both waging war because the spirit behind both of them is just Satan. Amen. So even though I may say Trump is doing one thing, the Lord allows him to do one thing, and the Lord allows Satan to do another thing with that power. And the South. Amen. So this is just, I just want us to follow these thoughts along. Now there's a lot. To, to bring out, but I'm trying to bring it all together for us as we go down. So Trump is the last president to, 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 to represent the two horns, to defend the Constitution. And all Trump has been screaming is that our Constitution is being broken, but yet people see it not. You know, amen. And so now they selected a man here on January 6th to be the president over the United States, not knowing that he's a vile man and he's going to do worse to the Constitution in which, in which we hold to at this time. So jump down next to the next part. Um, the fourth was Xerxes who did stir up all against Grisha and jump to the next bowl. But he failed and his great failure sealed the doom of what? So Trump, right, in 2016, he's the last president to wage war. Trump waged war against Persia. And when you come up to the king of the south, the king of the south waged war. And so you have this waging war as you go along. So what I'm doing is when I come down here, I note 2015, which is a parallel to Midway, and, 20, and this point where we're going to come to, which is this sign, which is lined up with Midway, we should see a war being waged, which I already have written here. We should see a war being w waged um, that's going to take place. Amen. Because when I go up to this big picture, right, let me go up to the big one from the sign down to this final decision where Swinon have. I don't ha um, for the, this is like the second trouble. Amen. Y'all follow? Because, right, this is what Swinon put in, the second trouble. Um, and during this time is this little time of peace. God's people is going to do a work in this time, and at the end, Satan gets to wage war. So when you come down here to this time, where we're going to have this sign, this little time of peace, God's people is going to give a powerful message, and, and this powerful message is going to lead them to wage war. Amen. We're about to come into some fearful times, um, this little movement, because God is getting ready to ascend this movement at the end. Why? Because the church horn is about to come up. So God needs to have a movement to contest this 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 this, this church one. Amen. Amen. It's now the church. I mean, we're in the war right now, because the war begins at the time of the end. These points that come after is just it gets it it gets greater, as because remember this is the seventh plague, and the seventh plague is all about the war, that's taking place between the north and the south. Yes, amen. Armageddon is going to be down there, but this is leading all the way down to it. Amen. Yeah. And if you go back to 2016, how many people were behind Trump? Almost, almost everybody in America was behind Trump. You know, they didn't like him, the globalists didn't like him, but many of the American people were, were kind of behind him, you know, and, they, and he waged war. And, and I mean, and what did they say when he came in? Never have we seen politics like this before. We've never seen things. It was unusual. 
It was an unusual sight to see a president come on the scene. And why was that important? Trump didn't need funding from rich men. He didn't need funding from other companies or corporations. He had his own fund. Xerxes didn't need funding from other nations to go to war. He had his own money. In fact, he showed the nations his money, that he had enough to wage war against Grisha. So as I'm understanding it, because the spirit behind Xerxes was the same spirit behind Trump, Trump really thought that he had the ability to go against these globalists. He really, uh, that's what the Bible teaches. He really believed that he could take down this globalist. And he waged war against them. But the Bible says he failed miserably. But I also want us to see that's just the earthly aspect, right? The two horn power at the end of the world is church and state. And church and state is, Grisha, let me put this. Greece, I'm not going to read it. I know I'm, I'm going off my notes because I'm, I'm blending so many things. Greece is a symbol of universal, right? It's the world. So Greece is a symbol to represent the universe. So Greece is representing the universe. And Satan now has the earth, has church and state, and he's using the earth to wage war against the universe, Greece, who represents Christ. And Christ is going to gather all of Greece, the, the, the members of his universe, and he's going to push back against Satan. Y'all follow? That's what the Bible is showing us. Amen? I hope y'all see this. Everything is a revelation of Christ. Everything. Amen. So the way to take down the two horns, Greece is showing us. You follow? The ten kings. So if you want to take down the two horns, Christ must gather his ten kings. And when you go to Zechariah, I think it tells you that ten is a symbol of, of, of um, nations. It, it, it gives you a symbol of nations. I don't have the verse because that's not the route that I was going. So when you have ten, so Christ is going to gather all the nations. And you see this in Job chapter 1, the sons of God. They came to this meeting and you see it in Esther chapter 1. And when, when Ahasuerus gathered all his nation of his empire of 127 provinces. A amen? amen? I hope we follow these thoughts. Um, so go, let's go back to our, to our word, to the, to the quotes. So Daniel 11.3, it says, A mighty king shall stand up, um, but when he does, he shall be broken. And jump down with me to Daniel 8. Daniel 8, um, this is what Swin and Romaria went over. This mighty king is Grisha. And Daniel 8 tells us that he comes from the West. And just jump down with me to the to Desire of Ages 621. This is why we say Greece represents the nations. It's, it's, it's easily proven in the Bible. It says, These men came from the West to find the Savior at the close of his life, as the wise men had come from the East at the beginning. Keep this in mind. This is the end. So who should we see come? The West. Y'all follow? Because the two horns is going down. So the West comes at the end, and the men of the East comes at the beginning. So this is why we saw much about Islam in the beginning, but now we're seeing much about the nations at the end. But they're both going to be there. The Lord just wants us to understand the East and the West, because Christ comes from the where? The East and the West. So you should see Islam and the West, the South, right here at the end. Y'all follow? Amen. So we should get ready. We're probably going to start seeing activities by Islam very soon, um, in the near future. So going down, it says, these men, wise, as the wise men came from the east, jump down to the next bowl. It says, so these Greeks representing the who? The nations, tribes, and peoples of the world. Biden is representing the nations, the tribes, and the peoples of the what? The world. They're all behind him to take down the last president of the two horns. Y'all follow? Easy to see because it's what we're actually living. We're... we're Amen. Saul. Amen. So I, I just wanted to bring that in also to show that this next system coming in, it, in order to come up, this is what Swinon went over with, yeah, with Saul and, and what Ramari went over. In order for this Western king to come up, he must break the two horns. In order for Christ to reign, he must break the two horns of church and state. Y'all follow? In order for America to come up, the two horns must be broken. Well, how did Christ break the two horns? He, he put a fire in the spirit of the south to set the north on fire. Now, this is what Romario went over. Amen. I'm just bringing these stories together and, and lining them up a little for us. 
So in order, to, in order for the land to reign, the two horns must be broken. So in order for Greece to rule, the two horns must be broken. So in order for Biden to come with, the principles of the Constitution must be broken. Amen? Very easy to see. Biden set up his kingdom by treachery and fraud. So Biden's kingdom goes down by treachery and fraud. You reap what you sow. You sow in mercy, you reap mercy. You sow in fraud, you're going to reap in fraud. That's what the Bible teaches us. So if, if, if Din, um, Zerubbabel, is it Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel, he says, if this was fraud, then let this happen. So if, th if the election was fraud, things are going to happen. Amen. Things are going to happen. So back to Daniel 11.40. Um, go down to me in the next quote verse. It says, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south, what? Push at him. And that word push means war. So in 1793, this is the time of the end. I hope y'all could follow these things. The king of the south, what did it do? It pushed. It begins to push at the what? At the papacy. That's what's happening. So at the time of the end, the king of the south pushed at him. But what does the Bible say the north is going to do? He's going to push back. But this is also an illustration of Christ. Throughout the history of the world, at different times, Satan pushed at Christ. And God allowed Satan to work out his, his, his pushing for a while. But then what does Christ do? He comes back against him. So right here, in, um, where we have 2020 marked from the prediction, we're seeing the south, the west, pushing at the north. But prophecy teaches us that the north is going to do what? It's going to come back at some point. So we should see signs of that take place right here. I, 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 all right, down here at the end, if he's going to be broken down here, correct? And this is an illustration of that, correct? Because we line it up right here. So the Lord is going to give us a sign that this is going to take place. This is what Swindon went over. So everything that we're going to see right here is only a faint representation of what we're going to see down here. And the whole purpose of this is to wake up Lot. God is going to allow this to happen so that Lot, because he's going to allow an unusual thing to happen that we just read, so that we who've been hearing this message would be aroused to duty and faithfully discharge our duty. Amen? Because that is just representing down here at the end, that we finally understand and, we're, and the church of God is going to faithfully discharge his duty. And God gives us this little time in here in order to do the work, but it doesn't mean trouble is gone. It does not mean that. It just means that the way is open for you due to the work in the midst of trouble. And while you're in that trouble, you have all the power to do that work. Amen. This, this seem in time. It doesn't mean that we're going to peacefully just give a message as and hopefully we'll see it as we go along. So um, um, jump over Psalms 58. I just wanted to show that the north comes back as a whirlwind and whirlwind means to take away. So that the democratic system is going to be taken away when the north comes back. But we want to understand how the north is going to come back. So um, go down to the spirit of the south. Now we're going to jump into the French Revolution, a little because um, one of, hopefully we'll get there. If we want to understand um, how a revolution looks nicely and how a government is set up, just look at the French Revolution. If we want to see ultimately what Satan really wants to bring the world to. And if you want to see how he works secretly, just look at what happened in heaven. You know, they, they, both, they both are giving us these nice views of, of how these things are taking place so that we can understand what is transpiring here. So you have the 1260 being represented here. And now I'm going to take a principle from the Bible where Christ says, destroy this temple, right? Mm -hmm. That's what happened here. They destroyed the temple, correct? But what did Christ do from 1798? In three days, what did he do? He raised it up. So this is showing you how the north and the south destroyed the temple. But this is showing you how Christ is going to raise it back up. So we have to take both these two histories and lay them up on this. So from end to end, the temple's being destroyed. And from end to end, the temple's being raised up. And this is what Romario and Swindon said with the verse in 2 Corinthians, that as God gives us these revelations, we are being pressed down. Amen. This is this thorn in, in, in the side in order for us to receive the revelation and come down to the end. So one is destroying the temple and one is, build, um, and one is building up the temple. And both work is, is being done at the same time. Um, so go down to, to jump over Revelation 10 and go down to the next heading of obscurity.
jump over Revelation 10 and go down to that um, obscurity. One second. Revelation 10, obscurity. Um, so now I just want us to look at in this time how the north harassed the two witnesses. And then in this time, how the south harasses the two witnesses. We need to understand this so that we know how to work in both these times when these different kingdoms is reigning. So when the king of the north is reigning, it is attacking the two witnesses. When Trump was reigning, he was attacking the two witnesses. He was up, but we need to, he doesn't do it openly. The north never does it openly. The south is always an open attack. You always see what the south is doing. Um, <clears throat> yes, he had the church, which is wrong. He was allowing the church to influence his mind in a particular direction. And as students of prophecy, we know that is wrong. We're not to control the minds of the government in that light. You know, we're to do it like how Daniel did it. We're to do it like how um, Joseph did it. And we're to do it like how the three Hebrew boys did it. That's how we're supposed to do it. Not forcing them to do what we want like how the men did it in Daniel 6. Or like how the men did it in Daniel 3. Or like how um, Haman did it in, in the book of Esther. That's how the Protestants are going to do that work. We're not going to do it that way. We're to do it. We're God's people to influence the nations in an intelligent manner um, as we go along. So both church come up here at the end, and both of us is going to have an influence on the nations when we come up here um, at that point. So go down. Obscurity. Look at the bowl. It says, during the greater part of this period, God's witnesses remain in a state of obscurity. Um, <clears throat> And jump down to the two witnesses. Oh, yeah, I don't want to miss this. Um, when the South comes up, there's no power in the two horns to deliver itself. When atheism came up, was there power in church and state to deliver itself in France? No. So when Greece comes up, there's no power. in. When the West comes up, there's no power in whatever system was found in that nation to help you in that time. Amen. So when we begin to give the message here, we will find no power in the Constitution to help us. Y'all follow? We're not going to find any power. Our help is going to have to be in the Lord God of heaven. That's it. Our help is going to have to be in the two witnesses we have, which is the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. That's where our power is going to come from. Um, we're not going to find any help in the earth. There's not going to be none to help us when, when, the, when the attention is now turned to us. Um, go down to the two witnesses to go down on the two witnesses in verse five it says that if any man will hurt them fire proceeded out of their mouth and devolved their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them all right this is what it says if any man hurt them they're to be hurt in like manner correct how did the king of the north hurt the two witnesses? The Bible says if they hurt them, they're going to be hurt the same way. How? How did it think of the papacy? By what? By what? How did they silence them? By making laws. So what is, it, so what is the king of the south going to do? Silence them by making laws. They're going to, they, how did they kill the two witnesses? They made laws. They used the Bible and they said the ones we serve the right to interpret the Bible. That's how they hurt the two witnesses. That's what the history says. They said the church reserves the right to interpret the Bible. So when you get down here, they're going to make a law against the church. <laughs> that's what they're going to end up doing. Because, and that's what the king of the south did. So the Lord is showing us this, this principle of what you do, this is what he's going to do. So when you take these understanding in here, how, what Biden did to get there, the same is going to be done to him. It's, it's, it's the same thing. That the Lord is the Lord is showing us. So jump down now to the verse. When you see a similar thing with Trump, because Trump basically used division to come in power. Yes. And they used the same division to remove him. Six, when the people show that division, this is what they're using now to impeach him. To remove him. To remove him. Amen. That's how he hurt the two witnesses, you know. So go on now. Jump down to verse 11. <coughs> so. I want to put this in 1793 France hurt the two witnesses by a civil law it was a civil law that hurt the two witnesses in France France they openly burnt the Bible and they openly said you couldn't teach from the Bible and they shut down the churches and they made the churches their their centers of worship for their heathen God of reason as as you go on and they waged war against marriage 
and they wage war against, against the Sabbath by, by making extra days. So I should expect similar things to be progressively taking place when this next um, administration comes into power. Now, go down to verse 11. It says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood up on their feet. Now, when you go back into history, this was 1796, right? The spirit of life entered back into them. Spirit of life. And when we come down here, we have something taking place for God's people. Correct? Amen. The spirit of life. This is where Lot comes out of Sodom, right? And the spirit of life came to Lot. That's, that's what, amen. That's what that was shown because Lot was in Sodom. And the spirit of life came to him and it told him to go to the mountain. That's what the life told him to, to do. So I just wanted to put that in here. And now the two witnesses are going to have to ascend at, at, at some point. But they can't really ascend until the, the man of sin goes down. Because the whole period, they're persecuted to the whole period, correct? But before it ends, the spirit of life comes into them so that fear can come upon people. So just before the end, fear is going to come upon some people because now they see this coming. But it's too late for that group. I, I, I hope, I hope y'all are following. Because when you go to the real second coming, when they get the day and the hour, the spirit of life comes into them. And what does the wicked see? They, they see their end. That's what they see. They see their end. They, and, and that's what I'm trying to cover. They're going to see this thing coming, but there's nothing that they're going to be able to do to prevent it. They the Amen. They run to the rocks. They can't do anything now to prevent what's coming. Um, great fear is going to come upon them at that point. He was going to say something? Okay. Now jump down to verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great what? earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven now when you go back into history I'm going to use the natural to teach us the spiritual our pioneers mark this point as this great earthquake that slayed men killing seven thousand so from here to here this great earthquake when the king of the south makes um, um, begins this warfare against the bible and begins the warfare against the church and it culminated with the overthrow of two horns. Y'all follow? What was the two horns that was overthrown? Church and state, the papacy. It, and that was, the, they called it a great earthquake because the, the, the church system and the state system was overthrown by this new republic of, um, of, of France. This great earthquake. I'm going to just put GE for great earthquake. And we teach that under the seventh plague, what are we going to see? The Bible tells us a great earthquake. Right? Great earthquake. But we need to understand that this is the end of the seventh plague, and this is this beginning. So we should have earthquake back here. Because the earthquake is from beginning to end. Now we want to understand what, and it culminates with a terrible overturning that's going to happen down here. And January 6th, November 7th, and was an earthquake. Now, I, I can't profess to say that January 20th is going to be an earthquake. Now, based upon what the Lord is sh showing, it wouldn't surprise me if something happened January 20th. It, would not, it, would not, it shouldn't catch us by surprise because we know from here to here there's to be this political earthquake that, that's to transpire. And it gets worse as we get to the end. It doesn't matter if there's going to be a little time of peace in there. It gets worse as we progress down to the end. Even when we come to the little time of peace at Midway, things are going to get worse as we get down to the, to, the, um, to the next struggle. The Lord just opened up the way in the time of peace for his church to do a particular work. He makes a way for us to do a work. That's, that's what he's doing. When no man, people are going to be afraid to touch his church during that time, but we, we have the opportunity to do the work. Um, going down now, let's look at religious elements. This is from Last Day Events 251. It says, we need to study the pouring out of the seventh vial. Now jump down to the, to the next bowl. When the earth is lighted with the glory of the angel of Revelation 18. So what does she connect to the seventh vial? Revelation 18. So Revelation 18 is an illustration of the seventh vial. And 9-11 typified that work, correct? So that's the seventh vial. And the whole earth was lit with the glory of God at 9-11. What took place at 9-11? The overthrow of many things. Many things was turned up on his head at 9-11. Um, and one of them, English law to Roman law. 
That's what took place at 9-11. So we should see a, a turning upside down of our government at the end here. And that's an earthquake. To spiritualism. <coughs> Amen. So go down now to the next, next part. It says, when the earth is lighted with the glory of God, the angel of Revelation 18, the religious elements, good and evil, will what? Some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. Y'all follow? So what did she say? Under the seventh vial, the religious elements of the world will awake. So when this thing takes place, the religious elements of the world are now wide awake. And everyone's going to be awake now at the end of the world and have to make a decision which direction they're going to go based upon what's transpiring. It says, awake from slumber and the armies of the living God will take the what? What are we going to take at the end? The field. This is Christ ruling all nations. That's him taking the field, ruling all nations. Um, going down to jump, jump down with me now to July 27th. I, I have that right here. It was a little um, July. Thank you. July 21st. 1773, it was a little time of peace for the two witnesses. It was 20 years before, and then this next power now arose. So what is the Lord showing us? During this little time of peace, what did God show to his people? The man of sin is about to go down. Because a little time of peace happened there with the Jesuits being suppressed. So God was giving a sign to his church that the, the warfare is almost over. Y'all follow? So what is the Lord showing us by doing this? He's showing us the next power that's about to come in place at the end, right here at this point. He's also showing us that how the power that's now reigning is going to go down at the same time. Y'all follow? Because when you go to 2015, just before Trump came up, this is when Trump announced that he was going to run for president. So you're already getting a glimpse of the next power that's going to come up. Why is that important? Because when you come down to the end, Midway, you have four what? What do you have? Swindon went over this. You have four horns, but out of one of them comes what? So at Midway, we should see out of these four horns, a little one already starting to speak his evil words. Y'all follow? Paul says the mystery of iniquity do what? He already works. The reason why we can now see this is because we're wide awake. We understand the movements of the spirits behind people. Amen. God's church is going to be a powerful church at this point. It's not complete, but at least they reached a point where they can now detect these two spirits. So when these four powers come up, we see a little horn amongst them. That's going to come up right down here at this point and wage war against the two witnesses. Amen. Amen. I, I, I just want to see that. Amen. And, and we and the movement came up. Amen. And amen. Like Swindon said back in 2015, the binding off message was already coming up. Yes. And the Lord was already showing us the direction he was going to go while the other group was already fighting it. What is that saying? We're going to have a battle probably amongst ourselves when we get to Midway. But all these things are what? Written for our what? Admonition. We're not supposed to repeat these things. The Lord has given us enough understanding not to repeat what's going to happen there. How do we do it? We must form habits of self-control. Don't rise up against something you don't understand. It's, it's, it's that simple. Do not fight against something you don't understand, except take your Bibles in hand, go on your knees and plead with the Lord. And then go sit down with that person that's teaching something you don't understand and try to make sense of these things. And to see if the, and this is a work we must do. Do we like it? No, we don't. We don't like, we don't, I don't like contention. But it's necessary because it's iron. What does iron do? It sharpens iron. And the way you sharpen iron, you got to rub the two of them against each other. You got to bump heads. You have to bump heads in order to sharpen that iron. Amen. Amen. So as we keep and I, I just we just need to get to a place where that doesn't bother us anymore, that we're willing to sit down and discuss matters that that don't make sense to our rational way of thinking or our irrational way of thinking. Um, jump down to the next quote on the 79. Oh, yes. So they waged war 1793. Spirit of life. Come back. 1796. 1773. This was a sign. 
And I know that this is a sign because Christ says, um, except those days be what? Shortened. Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, the whole chapters, all everything Christ lists off in there are signs. Everything. It's not just one particular thing. Everything is a sign. But at each way, some signs get brighter until a perfect day. Y'all follow? Because they said, what shall be the sign? And Christ says, um, false prophets shall arise. Well, that's a sign. He says, there shall be wars and rumors. That's a sign. He says, there will be earthquake and diver. That's a sign. But he says, when you see this sign, understand Daniel. Amen? So when we see the, the siege, like January 6th, November 7th, January 20th, this is all connected to the siege. What does he say? Understand the book of Daniel. So, so even though all of those are signs, there are specific signs that we must recognize, and God is sending light at that particular time. So Swindon marked out yesterday for us, you know, here we come in now to the sign. He has the, uh, sorry, here, the election, he has the certification, and then the inauguration, correct? And like he said last night, which I do agree with and believe, that when we reach the 20th of January, great light has to come out from the Bible on, on a particular things that are now taking place amongst us. Light has always been coming. Yes, it has. Since, since we entered into this, light has always been coming. But I want us to see as, as we get closer to the thing, that it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger because it's like a birth pang. It gets stronger and stronger until we, we, we reach this. Amen. Until we are born, until we come to the birth. Um, jump down now. It says, the Protestant nations heard of the, this is from um, one of the works of, of, of our Advent people. And notice what they said about the French Revolution. The Protestant nations heard of the decree of the atheists by which the Bible was condemned, but would not suffer it to be what? Buried out of sight. That's why they were not laid in graves. The Protestants refused to let them be laid in graves. So when they wage war against us right here, what are we going to do? Protest. We're going to protest that law that, that's only designed to put us in the grave. Y'all follow? Amen. It's, it's the true spirit of Protestantism is going to be going forth. And it begins right there at the sign because it begins right there at Midway. Amen. So going down, it says, now I'm going to try to close out around he, these points. It says, this, <clears throat> it says, the slaying of the witnesses, which I understand not so much in a literal sense or of a corporate corporal death, Though there may be many slain in this, in, the, in this sense, when it will be, but, the, but in a civil sense. So how are the two witnesses killed? Civil law. Civil Sunday law. Amen? They're killing the two witnesses with a civil Sunday law. And what do we do at the civil Sunday law? We take the field. And we go out and we wage war, but in a peaceful manner. Amen? Yes, the civil Sunday law is a war against the two witnesses. But this is the north that's working. Yes, it's just Satan. It's the north that's working here. Because the north is assuming a religious guise. Amen? Yes, amen. That's exactly right. Amen. We have to meet it. There is a verse that says we should be bold, you know, because Satan is getting bolder and bolder. And like when Mary went over, he only gets bold when we're ignorant of his devices. He's very bold when we're ignorant He because he can just lash out at any time. But if there's people to contest him, yeah, he can be bold, but Christ is there to match that. You know, where sin abound, grace do much more abound. Yes. And eventually he just, you know, Op right. He openly. Yeah, so Why did he do it? Why did he openly outright now? Because he saw the numbers that were behind him. He saw that he had, Ellen White said he had more than half of the angels before, before they, some went back. He had more than half. He had a lot of the angels behind him. So he got more bold because his numbers were there. Amen. So, they, so, I mean, that's just natural, you know. If, if there's a lion and there's this thing that's there before him, 
and the thing is bigger than a lion, but if the lion detects some weakness in you, that lion gets very bold. It's already a bold lion, you know, but if it detects some weakness, it see, ah, oh, you're, you're a punk, you know, and it's just going to rush you. That's, that's just how it's going to be. Amen. He thought he can rush God, basically. But God showed him that God is very bold, much bolder than he is. Bold enough to come to this earth by himself and wage war against him by himself. That's how bold our God is. Amen. Satan needed a whole army to go against God, but Christ did it by himself. He doesn't need an army. He did it by, he is his army, you know. So going, going, going back, it says, Civil sense, with respect to their ministry being silenced by their what? So how the civil law, what does it do? Silence your ministry. Do we see people si being silent, their ministry being silenced? The, 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 the highest administration in heaven in, in the government of the United States is being silenced. So when we go out here at the sign, giving a message, we should already begin to start looking towards being what? Silenced. Amen. So, yes, they are. By silencing the Washington, which is the president, is silencing heaven. Amen. And the highest office is heaven. So these two witnesses, the whole purpose was to silence them. But the king of the north was silencing them too, but he was doing it deceitfully. He was doing the same word. This one just does it openly. So, as I understand it, as Ramari was going over it, as we understand it, Biden is not going to be afraid to silence this ministry. He's not going to be afraid to do it. Um, as we as we go forward and things like that, it says um, their enemies and neglected by their friends. This is an affair that is not yet over. The witnesses have not yet finished their testimony. They are still prophesying, though in sackcloth or under some discouragements. How are they prophesying? Discouragements. So this time is going to be a little what? Discouraged. We're already in a discouragement. Nobody wants to hear this message. Nobody really cares for what we're teaching. It's discouraging, you know, but we must go forward because we know at the end there's a great reward. All of a sudden, everyone's going to want to hear this message. All of a sudden, everyone's going to be interested in the two witnesses and what they had to say. Prior to that, they were not interested. But now they're going to be very interested because we just read the religious elements will be awake. Amen. Amen. Everyone's awake at this point. So now we read earlier with the earthquake that when this happened, there's a slaying. I'm going to come to an end. So this is Revelation 16. We know it. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And we went over this last week. The air, this is rulership. It's the whole world. So when this happened, it, it affects the whole world. 9-11 affected the whole world. So the activities of Midway is going to affect the whole world. And this is easy to see. America is a symbol of the whole world. And the activities happening now in, in America is affecting the whole America. Which is, which is when it's done in America is going to affect the whole world. Amen? It's, it's very easy to see this if, if we understand Bible prophecy. Everything happening now is affecting everyone wherever they live in the United States of America. Even Alaska and Hawaii, they were affected by these things. So being across seas does not benefit anyone, anyone. And it says, there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were up on the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. France was shaken as if by an earthquake. Religion, law, social order, the family, the state, and the church all were smitten down by the impious hand that had been lifted against the law of God. What's going to be shaken? Social, church, family, government, all will be shaken in this experience that's going to happen at Midway, which is already beginning from back here because Daniel chapter 12, 2 says, some shall awake to life and some shall awake to, to shame and contempt. So from back here, there are some people living in the earth that's already seeing how everything happened is affecting all. And that would be this movement. We're already awakened to see how this is affecting and we should be preparing ourselves for the culmination that's going to take place at the end of it all. Because it must culminate. It has to culminate in a big, a, I mean, America's, America's in for a huge ride right now. It's not over just because Biden gets into that. It's, America's in for a terrible ride. Amen. So let's look at Revelation 13. Um, this is um, not Revelation 11, 13. Notice what it says. And in the earthquake. So in this shaking, right? Keep this in mind. And in the earthquake were slain of men, what? 
7,000. Now, it's, I, 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 I like that. The, um, I love the work that our pioneers did. You know, they really help us to understand things a little better at the end of the world. Um, this is what um, prophetic, ex, um, prophetic exposition, this is Lich. I believe it's Lich. It says, the error of this triumph strongly, the error of this triumph is strongly defined. There shall be in the same hour political what? Earthquake. The tenth part of the atheistic city shall fall. A portion of the infidel empire of France shall be, shall be torn away with the slaughter of many thousands expressed by seven, the number of completeness. And this catastrophe shall produce a religious influence on the mind of what? Isn't that what we're learning? That's what they just said. So the message that we're about to give here is going to produce a religious influence on the minds of the nations. There's some nice thoughts. I really want to connect with this, but I don't have the time. If you, if you go down here to 2016, this is where the riot, this is the fall of Babylon, 538. I don't have time to show it to you right now. This is 538 because this is 536. Y'all follow? This is where the gates open, but we don't come out till down here. This is where the light comes, but this, we don't come out from the sixth to the ninth hour. Y'all follow? Amen. 538 is teaching us something about how God opens up the door for us to go out. But Satan resists us until we get to the end. He resists us in the sixth hour, but in the ninth hour, his resistance gets stronger. So from here to here, Satan's resistance against us coming to the birth gets stronger. But God only allows him to come as strong as our strength. Amen. That's what we need to understand. So he can only come as strong as we're strong. Amen. No further. So God permits him to work up to that time. So 538, 536. And Ellen White says in between 538 and 536, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. So in between here and here, we must be thrown where? Into the den of lions. And when you go study out the lions, the lion is a symbol of nations or wicked men. Amen. So as you do this, and Ellen White says, because Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, this is what influenced Cyrus to do the work that he did there. Y'all, I hope y'all see what I'm saying. So when we get here and we're given this message, our message is going to begin to influence the nations. And they're going to bring about whatever they're going to, the Lord is going to allow them to bring about at the end. And now we become a strong influence to the nations here. And when you go to Daniel 6, because of our influence, what is the 120 men going to do who are now bound because of your influence? They're going to work deceitfully. They're going to go to and, to and fro in 127 provinces. Because that's what Satan is doing, to and fro in 127 provinces. Because God's people, like Daniel, is in heaven. To be in heaven is to be is to have the influence of the nation. This is what the Lord is going to do for his people right here. Our message is going to influence kings of the earth. But men are going to work against that influence. And they know they can't come against us legally. So how are they going to do it? Illegally. And they're going to frame a law that brings us back to the midnight cry. Y'all follow? To remove our influence. And the same thing just repeats again. And then we get to the, sun, the civil Sunday law and it just repeats again. And because Satan's is only teaching us about the great resistance from the north and the south. That as we, uh, as we advance in this message, Satan's resistance gets stronger as we go along. And Christ just brings us over the same ground again. He just keeps bringing us over the same ground, but with more additional light and information. Do we follow? Amen. Uh, going down. Uh, next quote. It says, this is from Miller. Um, and Miller was quoting, this is nice when you go read about this. Miller was quoting from a few men who wrote about the French Revolution before it actually happened. And they all said, one guy said in 1750-something that France is going to rebel against Catholicism and that Revelation 11 is, is taking place in France. And many other writers, and Miller was using that as his strong evidence to opponents that was contesting what he was saying about those things. And he was saying, look, these men already had the spirit of prophecy prophesying of how the two horns was going to come down. 
And so when you understand that before the two horns come down, God must have people back here who have the spirit of prophecy already prophesying about how the two horns going to come down. Because the principles of God's dealing with men is how? Ever the same. So before this power come down, the spirit of prophecy is being rested up on God's church to, to, so that people can be aware when this thing takes place that there was a prophet in the land. That's why the Lord is doing these things. It says, this, so this Miller says, these great events deserve to be distinguished from all others. He's talking about Revelation 11. And that's why I was, Revelation 11 is a beautiful passage to understand what's happening here. And this is what he says. Uh, to be distinguished from all others, for they will change the whole face of the what? World. World. So what's transpiring right now is Revelation 11 being fulfilled. And we're told that the scenes of Revelation 11 is to change the face of the whole world. And that's what happened in 1798. The face of the whole world was changed. It went from the old world right into this new world. A new government was set up. So we should expect at Midway a new system in place by the time we get down to, to Midway, which 9-11 was only typifying. And as we go along, these things only increase. Um, and now I want to read this quote in, in closing. It come into a close. It says, And in the earthquake was slain of men. And when you read that verse, you know, I used to read it. I used to say, but there wasn't, I mean, logically speaking, but there was no great earthquake in France. So obviously this can't be talking about a real earthquake. There was no real earthquake in the French Revolution. So how, how can men have died if there was no real earthquake? And this is what our pioneers reasoned as well. And they said, obviously, we didn't see that in France. Otherwise, this would have not been a prophecy. This is why in the same scripture you can take some being natural and some being spiritual. Amen. It doesn't make sense. You got to have discernment. Yeah. You got to use, God wants to, Miller says, form your opinion for yourself. That's what the rule says. And, I've, and when you find the prophecy explained, you know that an earthquake must be symbolic. So that means the men that are killed must be what? Symbolic. symbolic because a symbolic thing can't re literally kill you. It makes no sense. You know, it, the symbolic thing must represent something that's going to literally kill you. It, it, other, that, it, that wouldn't make sense. So if a symbolic thing is killing you, then you dying is also a symbol. And that's what our pioneers reason, and they came to this conclusion. Therefore, the death here is symbolic. Then what is it symbolic of? And they, they went to the text, and they said, um, And in the earthquake were slain of men, names of men, or titles of men, 7,000. France made war in her revolution of 1793 to 1798 and onward, and all titles of nobility. It is on all titles of nobility. Yes. So he's saying, Uriah Smith, that when they made war from 1793, this earthquake began. But they were making war on the titles down of men. With the pope and down, with the down with the pope, down with the king. So if you're in the king, if you're a king, you're a governor or a mayor. So that governor, whoever he is of any one of these states, he's going to be slain. He's going to lose his political title. He can no longer be governor. If you're a senator, you're going to lose your political title. You can no longer be a senator. Y'all follow? So right here, as we get closer, we should start expecting men in high position to be slain. They're going to lose their political title. But this is the, the, one of the best parts of it. This is going to be the greatest slaying you've ever seen. Many of them is going to be over. Their titles is going to be stripped from them. Amen. Amen. Y'all follow? So they don't have to literally die. They just have to be politically killed. And what? get this, if this is where it's going to greatly happen, we should see some of it from right back here because it's a sign. So the Lord is going to confirm what we're saying by showing how it's going to happen right here, that we should see men in political office, they're going to be smitten with double blindness. They're going, and they're no longer going to, be, going to be able to find the door, their freedom. It's gone. Y'all yeah, follow? Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Biden first came on the scene. Well, not first came. When Mitch McConnell first came on the scene, his first bout was with Biden. Well, not. The first thing he witnessed was Biden killing Bork. Oh, uh, yes. Amen. Amen. And that, that is what, that is how Biden himself was really in the ascendancy. Himself. Yes. And he came out by killing someone politically. And so the Bible says how you come out 
It's how you go down. Amen. So Biden, he got the highest office. He may be slain. He may lose that title of president. Y'all follow? In fact, he has to be slain. He has to be broken. Now, I won't teach that he will be killed literally, but based upon the scriptures, I will teach that he will be killed politically. Amen? Amen. So Biden is going to lose the presidency. He killed a lot of men, and the Bible says the way you kill, this is how you're going to be killed. Since you want to remove President Trump and strip him of his title and impeach him, you will be impeached. And that includes Nancy. So many politicians are going to be slain at Midway. But God is going to confirm what we're saying, I believe, by showing us at the sign. How many of them are going to be slain? Many of them are going to go down. They're going to lose their titles and religious people also. Because Ellen White says it was in the social, it was in the family. And, and, and I pray to God that it's in none of our family. Right? I pray to God it's not in our family. Literally and spiritually. Because she says the, the shaking was in both. And if we're not watching and seeing how Satan is working, then we will be shaken out. It's as simple as that. We should fear that. We should fear being shaken out of this movement. If we're not studying our Bibles, if we're not making this a habit to study every day, we will be shaken out. That's what God wants to drive home to us. It's really nice seeing these things prophetically, isn't it? It's sweet, right? But Revelation 10 says it's also what? Bitter. And what makes it bitter is our brethren. She says they bring the most bitter, bitterest. They become our bitterest opponents. Right? So but some of Biden's people is going to become his bitterest opponents. You, that's what Romario just went over. For Abimelech, the people who he was became his bitterest opponents. That's what the Bible is teaching us. The people that were with Trump, they became his what? Bitterest opponents. Pence, Pence of all people. His own vice president became his bitterest enemy. Right? So God forbid that spirit that's working in them is working in us. Right? That's what we should fear. Not without, within. Amen? And I'm saying that seriously, we need to start studying our Bibles. And I don't mean just waking up and just having morning worship and evening worship. I mean really studying our Bibles. When you go to Daniel 8, the Bible says, I considered the horns. So what was Daniel doing as those horns was coming up? He was considering them. He wasn't just watching them come up on TV and say, oh man, America's in trouble. He wasn't just doing that. He was considering those horns. He was considering Biden. He's a horn. He was considering Trump. He's a where Daniel. He was considering Trump. He's a horn. And my Bible says four horns is about to come up. So we should see four powers already beginning to come up. We, we should have the eyes to detect who these powers are. Because we have the spirit of prophecy amongst us. Amen. So let's go back. I'm going to close out because I, I know I'm way over time and I don't like that. But um. I just want to close out with this last, with this final thought on this point. Um, it says, we're slain of men 7,000. And it says, and an earthquake was slain of men. Jump down with me to, so when you go to the verse, it says slain of men. That word of means name. And, and I'm like, that's where they got it from. I would have never thought to look at the word of, because I thought of mean of. You follow? What, but what does our Bible say? Lean not to your own understanding even with the word of amen even with of don't lean to your own understanding because that may not be what the Lord wants you to get from that word so our pioneers took that and I was like where do they keep getting names of men from and I couldn't figure it out until I sat down with my Bible and I just prayed and I said Lord help me. I, Lord I can't teach this I, I receive what they're saying but Lord, I want to see where they got it from. So I have a sure form. I, I accept what our pioneers say and I will teach it. But Lord, if somebody asks me, well, I can say our pioneers said it. I would like to connect with that. Yes, I want to say our pioneers said it. But Lord, I want to connect with that. Let me show you. Amen. I want to connect. Let me show you with that. 
Let me show you why our pioneers said that. And the Lord helped me. He opened my eyes and said, look at the word of. That's what he did. Look at of. And when I looked there, oh man, my heart leaped. I was like, praise God, thank you. That's where they got it from. And now I can teach it with confidence. Slain of men. Because that's what the text says. So God, wants, so God put into his Bible to show us that sometimes killing, he wants us to see specifically is political killing. It's religious killing. Not literal killing, but family killing. Some of our fam, some of Lot's family was killed. Right? They didn't come out. They didn't come out of Sodom. So they died. They died. They spiritually died because they refused the message. And then fire came down and destroyed them. Amen? So the Lord wants us to see that, that some people are going to die before their death. Yeah, they're going to die in the wilderness spiritually dead. And we must, we must discern between the living and the dead. Amen? That's why the Bible is given to us, to discern between these two. So when you look up the word of, right there in the middle, name. That's what it means. And that's where I want to close out. It means name. And I'm over time. And just to end now with this point. So you have November 7th. January 6 of 2021, and this is 2020, and then you have January 20th, right? So Swinton and Romario touched this. Election, casting lots, certification, inauguration. Now, this has been going on in America for over 200 years. Who cared about it? Not a lot of people. But when you come down to the end of the world, who now cares about it? The whole world cares about it. So what is God driving to the world, to the minds of the people? Go and study your Bibles. You need to understand this. Not what's happening in the nation of America. Yes, understand that. Truthfully, understand it. Because the natural teaches you what? And when you understand it naturally, now look where? To what I'm doing in heaven. Yes, now look up to what I'm doing. So the Lord is showing us that right here, November 7th, you have this election which is what Swinon and Romario went over. And right here, they certified, certified this election. And right here on this 20 is the, is the coronation. It's the coronation that takes place. And all of this, all of this represents the transition. Transition of government. So Christ is teaching us how a government transitions from one to the other. So God is showing us how he sets up and takes down. So God wants us to see how he's going to take down Satan's kingdom that's been reigning for 7,000 years because Satan has been reigning in this earth for 7,000 years. So now, so now the reign of Satan is going to transition from his reign to Christ's reign. Amen? Y'all follow? And this is what Michelle said earlier in, in Romario's presentation that when Michael, when Michael what? Stands up. Now he's being inaugurated. And Ellen White says in GC, at the close of his ministry, Christ receives the kingdom. So it's this transition from the priestly role to a kingly role. And this is what Christ wants us to understand because we must see this for the second coming. We must enter into this by faith. How? Through the scriptures. That's how we do it. We need to see how he's being set up. So the Lord easily, the whole world is seeing this take place and God is going to have a people that come out at the end to explain it to them. Amen. To explain it to them. At the same time, the Lord is transitioning from one part of the movement to the next part of the movement. Amen. Um, we're going to see at the end is where he's going to do it. So he's showing us at the beginning <coughs> so that when we come to the end, we could participate in, in this transition. Amen. Because we're about to go from type mm -hmm. to the what? Anti-type. All these things is about to be about us now. Y'all follow? No more are we going to look at, oh, outside that represents us. No, 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 no. Now it's going to be you in that, in that picture. Now it's going to be you. Amen. So, I, go ahead. Going back to your, your thought about the killing, how this is all about natural and spiritual. If you go back to um, when Biden first began in, um, in the Senate, like what um, Swindon brought up about going against Bork, going against Robert Bork. And around that same time, um, 
Spider's family died in a car accident. So that w- and that was natural. But spiritually, his his family must also die as well, because um, Daniel Daniel eleven teaches us that it doesn't go to his posterity. So mm-hmm. all those in his cabinet that would that would um that would fall in line after after his um after his passing, like Alexander the Great, mm-hmm. they would also have to be have to be smitten. They would have to pass through. Amen. So naturally, his family died. So spiritually, his family has to die. Oh, uh, okay. His spiritual, his his political family. Yeah, that's yes, political, political family. family. Amen. Because that's his the, his political political family. That's his son. And none of his posterity, no Democrats is going to sit on the throne there. Amen. 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 Yeah. Just Repu- I, I don't even I don't even know if I can say Republicans. The Lord is just going to set up a it's a, set, it's a new government. Yeah. But somebody just asked me, said, "Can I explain what I was saying?" So I just want to say this. Re- okay. s- 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 go ahead. Yeah, one more point. Um, if you go and look into his um, into his speech, his inauguration speech, he says, "Who?" Um, um, Biden. He made not, it public. Oh, okay. Speech, the speech he made after speech. His, his speech he, he made um, after he became president elect after he won um, the election the mm. he says he calls he calls he says um, he calls Kamala now a part of of his family so it's falling in line right with what um, what we are what we're teaching yeah it goes Amen. directly with it and it won't go to her Amen. Now that you made her family, guess what? When you go down, she doesn't get it. None of your posterities get it. None of your democratic people get it. Nobody who supports you get it because it's the seven, it's the earthquake, political slain. Many of his supporters are going to be slain. And I praise God when this comes to pass. Not because these men are being punished, but man, God is manifesting His power in the earth. When that when it comes to pass, that's Revelation 18 and type being fulfilled. The whole earth is full of the knowledge of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. That's the power we receive there, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Every eye sees this coming to pass because the Lord had a people in the wilderness prophesying because power was given to the two witnesses from the beginning to prophesy of what's coming at the end. And that's what we're doing here. But to explain, someone asked a question. Revelation eleven thirteen 13 says, A slain of men in the earthquake is a political death. That's, that's what it means, politically kill, religious kill, family, family members, not literally kill, they, they are spiritually dead. It's a civil murder because they murder the two witnesses civilly. So the Lord is going to murder them by the law. They use the law to kill the two witnesses, so God is going to make a law to kill them. Amen. He's, he's gonna, yes, he's going to lift up the Constitution and is going to slay them. So the Constitution, in some sense, gets its power back at the end. That's where it gets its power back. And now they're going to have to work deceitfully to change it again. Amen. So I pray that that was that was that, that, that was not, that was explained, that we got a little understanding of it. And hopefully soon we'll, get, we'll go more into these thoughts. But let us close out with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, O God, for opening up these truths to our mind. Dear Lord, and for the work you're doing in the earth and the work you're doing in heaven. Lord, please take our minds from this earth to heaven um, so that we can understand what is taking place amongst us. We ask that you please forgive us of our sins that you created us a clean heart, and may you prepare the way for the next presentation that's about to take place, O Lord, to culminate all that was said, dear Father. May you, bless the, may you bless the work that was done and the work that will be done, all in your name's honor and glory. Please be with us as we continue on throughout this Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.